the universe at its very, very fundamental level actually separates. Now, there's a theory of, of quantum mechanics called the multiple worlds hypothesis, which states that every superposition is, is like Roger said, a separation in, in fundamental reality. But those separations branch off to form a new universe, so that every superposition leads to a new universe. So a particle in this plate, in this position here, will branch off and form a new universe. And if it's here, we'll branch off and form a new universe. We have this infinity of, over, of universes, more or less in parallel. And a lot of people believe that because mathematically it works out and it solves a problem. But it seems a little wasteful to have all these universes around. Roger said these separations occur, but they're unstable. Okay, there's some intrinsic factor in the universe that makes these separations unstable so that after a specific time, they will collapse or reduce to one state or the other. And he was able to come up with a, a, a use the indeterminacy principle, one of the fundamental equations in quantum mechanics. It's a very simple equation. E equals H over T, where H is Planck's constant. E is the gravitational self-energy, the amount of superposition, the amount of mass separated from itself, the amount of, of separation of, of space-time geometry. And T is the time until collapse. Basically, they're inversely related. So a large separation would collapse very quickly. A small separation wouldn't collapse for a long time. These types of separations, unlike the randomness inherent in decoherence, would be influenced by intrinsic factors in space-time geometry itself. And this is Roger's non-computable factor. And he suggested that, these fa that this non-computable factor, intrinsic features of the universe, were like platonic values that were embedded in the universe from the Big Bang, including mathematical truth, as well as other platonic values like ethics, aesthetic values, and so forth. Good, evil, if you will. You can carry it as far as you want. And we later added the idea that qualia, the fundamental components of experience, of consciousness, were also features or properties at this fundamental, of space fundamental level of space-time geometry. So that a superposition, a separation in space-time geometry, which if isolated long enough to reach its threshold for self-collapse, would choose one or the other and basically access and select a particular set of qualia, therefore giving rise to experience or consciousness. So Roger's idea was that this type of collapse due to an objective uh, factor, so he called it objective reduction, or OR, objective reduction, would be conscious. And if it conveyed information, would, would be like the consciousness we have. To go back, as I said, a small object in superposition wouldn't collapse for a long time. So a single electron, for example, if isolated in superposition, wouldn't collapse for 10 million years. Okay. And, and the, the E, the amount of superposition, would be very low. We think E is related to the intensity of the experience. So it wouldn't be, when it had that experience after 10 million years, it wouldn't be very exciting. It would be kind of bland. Something like Schrodinger's cat, which is one, a, a kilogram, say, because it's fairly large, would only last, would last a very short time, like 10 to the minus 37 seconds. So it would, we wouldn't even notice it was both dead and alive. It would, it would collapse so fast. So we tried to apply this to the brain and came up with a time t that related to functions in the brain, which are roughly hundreds of milliseconds, fractions of seconds. And we related that to microtubules and how much, mi how much microtubule protein must be in superposition, how much quantum computation must be going on. And based on the number of microtubules, roughly 100,000 to a million neurons for every conscious moment, like that, which could happen like roughly every, roughly 40 times a second. So this goes back to Whitehead's idea that consciousness is a sequence of events, roughly 40 times a second, and that each event is actually a separation and collapse in fundamental space-time geometry, and that Whitehead's wider field of proto-conscious experience is fundamental space-time geometry. Back to what space-time ge geometry is, what that equation, E equals H over T? Right. What, right. Can you elaborate a little bit on that or, or use metaphors that are right, in the everyday right. world that we might be able to follow you on? Well, Roger asked the question, what does it mean for a particle to be in superposition? Right. How can something be in two places at the same time? And the answer, he said, is that the underlying reality of the particle separates. The universe, at its most basic level, splits so that a particle over here and here is actually its underlying reality separating. Interestingly, but isn't that isn't that kind of like saying that? I mean, isn't that potentially infinite? 
Well, there's a, an interpretation of quantum mechanics called the multiple worlds hypothesis, which says that every superposition branches off and forms a new universe. So a superposition, uh, a separation of particles, one goes off and forms a new universe where the particles in one location and one in the other. So going back to Schrodinger's cat, there would be a universe with a cat dead and a universe with a cat alive. Okay. And that's actually a, a, an interpretation that many people ascribe to because mathematically it works and it gets around the problem of superposition. Roger kind of follows that up to a point. He says that superpositions are indeed separations in reality at the fundamental level. That, that I guess I'm, I'm getting a little hung up on. Fundamental level Fundament is an implication that, I mean, people used to say that, that um, atoms would be the fundamental level and then it's quarks and now we're getting neutrinos and things. I mean, how, do we, how can we ever be certain that we've reached the fundamental level or even, you know, theoretically, how do we know that there's not something more fundamental than that, more fundamental than that? I mean, right. I mean how, given infinity, which is a mathematical prediction, how do we know when we've reached the edge of it? We, we can't know that we've reached the edge of it ever. Well, if you go downward in scale, if, uh, and, and physicists do this, well below the size of atoms, okay? And an atom actually is mostly empty when you think about it. If, if the nucleus of an atom were, were the size of a basketball, the electrons would be circling around 20 miles away. Sure. Most of it's empty space. Right. And in a vacuum, of course, there's no atoms anyway. So most of the universe is, is empty. If you go downward in scale, below the scale of atoms, an atom is roughly 10 to the minus 8 centimeters. Okay. If you go 25 orders of magnitude smaller, on the way down, everything is smooth until eventually you hit a level where all of a sudden there's coarse, coarseness, irregularity, bumpiness, information. It's kind of like falling out of an airplane from 33,000 feet. You see the, the ocean and it looks smooth. Mm -hmm. But as you get close, you get you get very close, or if you were in a boat on the ocean, a small boat, you'd be chopping up and down. Mm -hmm. There's waves, there's, there's coarseness, there's information. Okay. okay. Similarly, at the basement level of the universe. But again, that's an assumption, right? To well, say that this that's is the, the level. Well, this is the level that there's quantization. Okay. And yes, you and relative to us, for all practical purposes, relative to, relative to us, that level is 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 where quantization occurs. As far as we can us. tell, that's the basement level. Now, some people think that... that from, the, from the plane that we're flying in, yeah. that's where the... I mean, or the level that we're flying from, from the ocean, that's... Or, or from, let's say, layers of... of and we've got air in between us and the water. So I mean, Smoothness, and you get down to coarseness. You get right. down to irregularity. You get down to information. But below the water is, is, is also the ocean floor, which is not, is not similar to the, to the, the waves on, on the surface of the water. So, right. I mean... Well, some people think that if you go down below that level, or that, that uh, at that level you fall into black holes, and there's these miniature black holes everywhere, and then you pop out somewhere else. So, okay. But that's, that's conjecture. Nobody knows, really. Okay. But we do know that at that level there's coarseness, there's granularity, and this level is described various ways. It can be described by, by string theory. It can be described as quantum foam. It can be described as quantum gravity. It can be described as spin networks. Probably the, the, the explanation that makes the most visual sense to me is, is that at that level there's a kind of multi-dimensional or three-dimensional network spider web of spin where the kind of the edge of each uh, of the web is pure spin and that the universe ultimately is made of spin. You could say, well, what's spin? What's, what's that made of? And, you know, at some point we have to say, well, that's irreducible. We just have to say it's just there. And similarly, we it's part of the universe at that level. That's like, okay, so now we're into the proto-conscious experience. I'm saying, what's the, the, the difference from, let's, like I said, let's say that the, that, that the microtubules are quantum computers, but they must be drawing from or being influenced by th something that's more fundamental to it, to them, themselves, and those things, or that level, must be influenced by something that's more fundamental to it, and so on and so on, infinitely, and we're basically still a, a, a result of, of those, those states collapsing uh, at, at seemingly random but somewhat predictable, i.e. quantum computers. One way or another, we're getting a yes or a no out of that computer that's operating using quantum computation, right? I mean, no matter how you set, splice it, at some point, the screen says either yes or no when we type in our question. No, the screen says the experience that we have, this complex image that you have right now of me and me of you, or that the viewers have looking at their screen. That's what. That's the answer. That's the 